Listen closely. One, reach out to an old person. Two, record a story or a song or a recipe in their mother tongue. Three, listen to it. Four, listen so gently that you feel the intimacy of pronunciation, the undulating nuances of atmosphere and rhythm, the music tucked under meaning in a mother tongue. Five, listen so fully that you taste the hardness and the softness of experience in the voice. Six, listen so deeply that you hear the fullness of the years it took to grow those words, the vulnerability of a generation, the parts of us we are forgetting, and an archive that may soon be gone forever. Feel the force of listening closely. Share it with a young person. A new model for listening. Counterspace draws together a constellation of interests around the construction and imagination of belonging across territories and geographies, looking at how people make our city, Johannesburg, a place to be held through ritual gatherings in spaces in the cracks of the urban environment at various scales, from the scale of the body to the scale of the cosmos. In South Africa, Bantu Stan, also known as Bantu homeland, black homeland, black state, or simply homeland, was a territory that the National Party of South Africa set aside for black inhabitants of South Africa and Southwest Africa as part of its policy of apartheid. In a generic sense, Bantu stands are regions that lack any real legitimacy, consisting of several unconnected enclaves. The government established 10 Bantu stands in South Africa for the purpose of concentrating the members of designated ethnic groups, thus making each of those territories ethnically homogenous as the basis for creating autonomous nation states for South Africa's different black ethnic groups. Under the Bantu Homeland Citizenship Act of 1970, the government stripped black South Africans of their citizenship, which deprived them of their few remaining political and civic rights in South Africa and declared them to be citizens of these homelands. Acting in plan and section, this condition solidified a series of isolations, walls of varying degrees and thicknesses between people, and the physical displacement of bodies from lands. It is often said of some parts of Johannesburg that one can feel the atmosphere of the places that were raised to the ground. The land is a part of our being, and we are a part of it. Through centuries of breath, ritual inscription, nutrients, livelihoods, and life. How many ways can we listen to the grounds beneath our feet? Sometimes, calls from the ground are whispers, moments from the past that surface and interface with the present. Sometimes, they are rhythms, heartbeats, rituals of the city that we must heed. Other times, calls are loud, shouts of protest, rage, and calls for change, tear gas, gunshots, and ululating. Most often, we have to learn to listen to silences and absences, or rather, to read presences where we have been conditioned not to. Working in Johannesburg is a practice of listening through walls and listening to the ground. Architecture is a condensation and an overlaying of time, stories, field notes, excerpts, archaeologies, and forensic samples. Practice, research, and pedagogy present us with platforms to think through and respond to the inextricable connections between history, forces of labor, race and class struggles, capitalism, toxicity, and climate change. Diverse origins and forms of practice events, rituals, atmospheres, temperaments that bring to light our deep pasts and deep futures are not novel or radical. For my practice context, they are simply implicit and imperative. 
Counter Space was started when I was a student. At the time, a silent uproar of conviction and aspiration in the face of pessimism, a reaction and a response to the architectural profession and canon. Thoughts, politics, obsessions, inspirations, intentions, frustrations, ambitions, and desires for Johannesburg are embodied in each of our projects. Um, I will stop there for time.